In this lecture, we will discuss second-degree AV block Mobitz type 1, or Winky Bach, including its mechanism, EKG features, potential causes, and clinical significance. In general, second-degree AV blocks suggest that the P waves are sometimes related to the QRS complexes. This is because we will see that there are dropped beats that occur. There are two forms of second-degree AV block. The first is second-degree AV block Mobitz type 1, or Winky Bach and the second is second degree AV block Mobitz type 2. These are important to differentiate as not only is the location of the anatomic problem different, but also the management. While Mobitz type 1 is often benign, Mobitz type 2 has a greater risk of progressing to complete heart block. The anatomic location that is affected in Mobitz type 1 is different and higher in the conduction system at the crest of the AV node or the junction between the atrium and the AV node. And we're going to see that with Mobitz type 2, the block occurs lower in the conduction system. So if you look here, okay, what we're seeing is that we have our sinus node, okay, this is our AV node. And then we have our his bundle that comes afterwards okay then we have our right bundle branch left bundle branch our left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle okay so that's our normal conduction system the issue here is with our av node okay so these are av blocks it's going to occur near the av node and we're saying that oftentimes it's occurring right here all right at the av crest or where the junction between the atrium and the av node okay so imagine it right at this point there okay so that's where we have it in mobis type 2 we'll see it actually occurs lower and that's why uh, it's important to differentiate between these two and we can do that on the ekg all right so our focus here is mobis type 1 the winky bach form second degree av block mobis type 1 or winky bach is characterized by progressive lengthening of the pr interval with intermittent dropped beats in other words you can see a normal pr interval in the first beat but then every successive beat that follows has progressive longer PR interval until a conduction at that AV node fails and resulting in a drop beat. A P wave will occur but fail to conduct to, th to the ventricles and therefore the QRS complex is dropped. Okay so if you look here let's just erase everything we've done so far so we can just start with a clean slate. So what we have is our PR interval. Remember when we look at our intervals the PR intervals here's our complex this is the p wave qrs complex and t wave the pr intervals from the beginning of our p wave up until our qrs complex okay so when we're looking at these blocks with this mobit type one and two we're going to be looking at this area here okay both of them will have dropped beats and what differentiates mobit type one is that we have this progressive lengthening until we get a drop beat so notice here in the first beat okay we'll label this number one and we'll label this image number one okay so in both of these let's just get rid of this for now so in both of these cases in one so this beat here and then in image number one the conduction system is normal okay so we start at our sinus node conduct through our av node to the ventricles so our av conduction is normal so we have normal Q, uh, pr interval duration remember normal pr intervals between 120 and 200 milliseconds which is three to five small boxes and then we have the next one that comes about okay and the next one is in this image we'll call this the second beat okay now notice there's this block that's occurring here okay and with that block the pr interval starts to lengthen a little more okay so if you compare that to one and two you see the second pr interval is a little longer and then we have the third one so we'll label this image three and this beat three as well so notice that it's getting thicker here okay the block is getting thicker and because of that our pr interval is lengthening okay until finally in this fourth beat here, okay, the fourth beat in this fourth image, we have our sinus node that fires, so we have our P wave that's present, although we can't get through this area here. It's blocked so significantly that nothing can get past, and because of that, we don't depolarize or repolarize our ventricles, and we get a dropped beat, okay? And then again, after that occurs, we get enough time in between that the cycle then repeats itself, okay? So as we said, from the pause of the previous QRS complex, so from this point here, and then our drop to beat, all this duration, this allows enough time for the AV nodal conduction to recover, leading to a relatively shorter or normal PR interval again. The cycle then repeats itself with the PR intervals progressively lengthening until a drop to beat, okay? So we're saying from this dropped beat here okay or from that qrs complex we get a dropped beat okay because av node 
cannot conduct through to the ventricles. By the time that point all this area finishes, it gives enough time for the AV node to reset itself that we then go back to this area here, one, where it appears normal, okay? So again, we have normal conduction through here, and imagine this as one, and then we would go to two, three, and a drop bead, okay? And that cycle will continue to repeat itself, all right? Now, what you can think about, and one way some people like to remember, is longer, longer, longer drop, that's a sign of Winkybach, okay? And what I mean by that is that the PR intervals here, it gets longer, it gets longer, and then eventually drops, okay? So you just think of the PR interval getting longer, and that's one of the signs of what we call Winkybach. So some people like that mnemonic. Okay, now a quick way to confirm that you're dealing with Mobit type 1 is to look at the PR intervals both before and after the dropped beats. Okay, the PR interval after the drop beat should always be shorter than the PR interval before the drop beat. Okay, so let's look at this now. We'll erase this here. Okay, clear this up for you. So again, we're saying that one way to confirm it is by looking at the PR interval after the drop B, here's our drop B, okay, nothing's occurring here, in the PR interval before. And we always want to see the PR or after our drop B to be shorter, so this is, should be shorter or normal, and this should be longer, okay, because we had enough time to recover that we're going back to our stage one where the PR or the AV node allows the conduction through it, and we should have normal AV conduction, and that's why it's shorter, okay, so that's one way to confirm it if you're trying to differentiate uh, and see if you really have Mobitz type one, okay. Now, this type of second degree AV block can be further characterized by the number of P waves associated, associated with each of the QRS complexes. So in our example here, we would call this a three to two Mobitz type one or Winky bot. Okay, and what do we mean by that? Well, we're saying the P waves to QRS complexes, okay? So, or excuse me, we would say this is a four to three, okay? So again, P waves we're looking at to the QRS complexes, okay? We're saying this one is four to three, meaning that here's a P wave, here's a P wave, here's a P wave, and there's our fourth P wave. So one, two, three, Four, four P waves, okay, and then QRS complexes, one, okay, our first one, our second QRS complex, our third QRS complex, and then we don't have one here. So that's four to three, we call this, okay? So four to three Winky Bach is one way. Okay, so just a few more points here. So second degree uh, heart block, Mobitz type one, is a reversible conduction block that is believed to result from a diseased or injured AV node with a long refractory period. The malfunctioning AV nodal cells progressively fatigue, which is reflected in the progressively prolonged PR interval, until finally failing to conduct an impulse, reflected in the dropped beat. Some causes include an increase in vagal tone, such as in athletes, inferior infarctions can cause it, myocarditis, especially Lyme disease, mitral valve repair, if you're in that area, repairing the mitral valve, okay? So remember our mitral valves be, uh, in our left atrium and left ventricle, so in this area, sometimes uh, people that have mitral valve surgery can have uh, this area affected. And medications can also cause it. So beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, and amiodarone. Now clinically speaking, Mobis type 1 is often benign with little to no hemodynamic instability. It is, uh, has a low risk of progressing to third degree or a complete heart block. Asymptomatic patients don't typically require treatment. If it is a consequence of Lyme disease, obviously you want to treat the Lyme disease and it all often resolves. Now symptomatic patients may benefit from atropine, but rarely require permanent pacing, okay? And this is important. We'll see in Mobis type 2 that this can, Mobis type 2 can actually progress and has a greater risk of progressing to third degree or complete heart block. And sometimes those patients uh, more often often than Mobis type 1 may require permanent pacing. All right, let's briefly run through our chart before we end here. So Mobis type 1, or second degree uh, AV block Winky Bach, this results from progressive PR interval lengthening, okay, with intermittent dropped beats. Okay, remember that longer, longer, longer drop, that's a sign of Winky Bach if you have trouble remembering it. So it's a re reversible conduction block at that AV node or the atria to AV node junction, okay? There's malfunctioning of those AV nodal cells that progressively fatigue until they finally fail to conduct an impulse. Often you have an injured or diseased AV node with a re long refractory period. We mentioned a number of causes, clinically often benign and usually no uh, hemodynamic instability, okay? Now in terms of the regularity, this is a regularly irregular 
beat or a rhythm because we have that dropped beat, okay? So that drop beat makes it all our uh, intervals, okay, irregular. The rate depends on the underlying rhythm. The P waves, they're present with same morphology and access, okay? You'll even have a P wave that's occurring with that dropped beat. So notice here with our dropped beat, we're still having that P wave. It just cannot conduct through to our ventricles uh, to set up and allow that QRS complex to form. Okay, so relatively constant P to P intervals. Remember the P to P intervals from one P wave to the next. You tend to see those relatively constant P to P intervals because our sinus node is working fine and continuing to fire. The issue is at the AV node. Okay. The P to QRS ratio, we saw the one that was here was four to three, okay, where we saw four P waves to three QRS complexes because of that dropped beat, all right, but it will vary depending on uh, the type of block, okay, you can have two to one, three to two, we had four to three, it could be five to four, and so forth, okay. Now the PR interval, this is really the main focus where we're looking, we're looking at AV nodal conduction, again, progressively lengthens until that non-conducted P waves, we have that dropped beat, cannot get through that AV node, Okay, and one other thing to note is that the longest PR interval is immediately before, okay, the dropped beat. So the longest PR interval is this one here before the drop beat. This is our drop beat. And the shortest PR interval is immediately after the drop beat, okay. As the AV node recovers, this is the shortest PR interval. And one way to check it, remember, was that the PR interval after the drop beat should be shorter than B before the drop beat, okay. So this should be shorter than the one that came before. That's a good way to check it. The greatest PR interval is often between the first and second beats of the cycle. All right, so we're meaning that from this to point to this point, you tend to have the greatest, greatest increase in the PR interval, okay? But it's a little more trivial fact. Now the QRS interval is normal, okay? So even once we get through our AV node, everything below in the ventricles should be fine, okay? Unless there's some pre-existing thing going on. So normal QRS interval, there, should, there could be grouping, okay, as we saw here, but it, can, it will vary, all right? And we obviously have dropped beats. We saw the drop beat because we could not conduct through to the ventricles. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed second degree AV block Mobit type 1 or Wenckebach, including its mechanism, EKG features, potential causes, and clinical significance. I hope you learned something.